In this video, you'll learn everything you probably need to know about decibels. The first thing you should know is that a decibel is a ratio, which allows simple numbers to express values that would normally require many more digits. That's one reason why the decibel is so commonly used to describe sound pressure. Humans are capable of perceiving a vast range of sound pressure changes from subtle to extreme, which makes discussing audio levels very challenging. The Pascal is a unit that describes air pressure in terms of force per square meter. The limits of human perception of sound ranges from 20 micropascals to 20 pascals. It's much easier to discuss sound pressure in decibels rather than pascals, as you can see with this chart. Sound pressure is shown in pascals on the left compared to decibels on the right. Decibels represent these quantities in a way that is much easier for us to understand and interpret. Decibels also present changes in sound pressure on a logarithmic scale, which is more relevant to the way humans perceive loudness. In a linear scale, every step is the same size. For example, 10, 20, 30, 40, where each step is an addition of 10. In a logarithmic scale, each step has the same proportion. For example, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, where each step is a multiplication of 10. If you're like me, you're probably more accustomed to thinking in linear terms. For instance, doubling the number of steps taken will double the distance traveled. But this mode of thinking doesn't hold true for the way humans perceive loudness. Thinking in linear terms, you might suspect that twice the amplifier power produces a sound twice as loud, which isn't the case. In reality, as sound pressure level increases, more and more power is required to produce the same perceived increase in loudness. The decibel accounts for this fact by presenting absolute values like the Pascal on a logarithmic scale. A decibel is a way of describing the ratio between two quantities. When using a decibel, you'll always be comparing two values. Saying the drums are 120 decibels is an incomplete statement because the decibel alone has no value. You could instead say the drums are 20 decibels louder than the guitar, and this statement is more meaningful because it draws a comparison between the level of the drums and the level of the guitar. The level of the guitar in this case is the reference point. In the case of a fader on a mixing console, unity gain or zero dB is the reference point. Pushing the fader above 0 dB adds gain to the signal. Pulling the fader below 0 dB attenuates or reduces the signal. And decibel values above unity are positive, while decibel values below unity are negative. For many applications of the decibel, there are standardized reference points for defining 0 dB in absolute terms, and each one has its own suffix dBm, dBu, dBSPL, and so on. This chart defines the 0 dB reference point for a few common audio applications. Let's take a closer look at two of the most common applications of the decibel in audio production. Sound pressure level, measured in dBSPL, and digital audio metering, measured in dB full scale. 0 dB SPL represents the threshold of hearing, or the quietest sound humans can hear. Therefore, we know that 80 dB SPL is 80 decibels louder than the quietest sound humans can hear. 0 dB FS, or full scale, refers to the maximum amount of bits in a digital system. The highest level possible in a digital audio system is 0 dB FS. If a digital audio signal exceeds 0 dB full scale, digital clipping will occur. Thus, digital audio levels are negative numbers. Minus 12 dB full scale is 12 decibels lower than the maximum level possible in that digital system. In a moment, we'll learn to make basic decibel calculations, which will allow you to find the ratio in decibels between absolute units like volts, watts, or pascals. But the formula for decibel calculations will make a lot more sense if you first understand how the decibel relates to the bell. This is the formula for finding the ratio between two quantities in bells. Power 1 is the reference power, and power 2 is the measured power. This formula can be solved using a calculator with the log function. Let's try finding the ratio in bells between 10 watts and 100 watts. The formula would look like this. Dividing 100 by 10 gives us the ratio between the power quantities, which is 10. Using the log function of the calculator, we can find that the ratio between 10 watts and 100 watts is 1 bell. Now that you know the formula used for calculating ratios in bells, let's adjust that formula to calculate ratios in decibels. For comparison, let's find the ratio of the same two power quantities as before, 10 watts and 100 watts, this time in decibels. The formula looks like this. To start, divide 100 by 10 to find the ratio, which is 10. 
Use a calculator to find the log of 10, which is 1. Multiply 1 by 10, which is 10. Therefore, the ratio between 10 watts and 100 watts is 10 decibels, or 1 bell. Hopefully, you're beginning to see that the decibel isn't as confusing as it once seemed. For many, the most confusing aspect of using the decibel is deciding which formula to use in a given situation. The formula for decibels is 10 times the log of power 2 over power 1. In some situations, however, you might see this formula, 20 times the log of value 2 over value 1. Why are different formulas used? The decibel is always a power-related ratio. When calculating electrical or acoustical power levels, we use the basic decibel formula, 10 times the log of power 2 over power 1. The decibel can also be used to represent changes of non-power quantities. When calculating voltage and sound pressure levels, for example, we use this formula, 20 times log of value 2 over value 1. The reason we multiply by 20 is explained by the power equation. In this equation, W is power, E is voltage, and R is resistance. Notice that voltage is squared in this equation. Power is proportional to voltage squared. This is why we multiply by 20 when finding decibels of voltage or other non-power values. Another way to come to the same answer would be to use this formula, squaring each voltage value before finding the ratio. Quantities that are not power must be made proportional to power. To recap, anytime you're comparing power quantities in decibels, multiply the Bell formula by 10. Anytime you're preparing non-power quantities in decibels, multiply the Bell formula by 20. It's hard to give a straight answer when answering the question, how many decibels is double? That's because it depends on what is being doubled. As you just learned, non-power quantities must be made proportional to power in order to be represented in decibels. The decibel value to represent a doubling of power quantities is different from the decibel value to represent a doubling of non-power quantities. In the context of audio production, voltage and sound pressure are the most common non-power quantities. It's useful to remember the decibel value for 2 to 1 and 10 to 1 changes in power, voltage, and sound pressure if you're going to be working in audio production. You can use this chart for reference. In the next video, we'll learn how to design a sound system from the ground up. You can watch that video by clicking the link that's on your screen now. I'll see you there.